Git. It's the version control sensation that's sweeping the nation and the world. Developers love Git for its raw speed, its powerful branching and merging strategies, and its distributed features. But unfortunately, Git's distributed nature comes with a dark side. Git has poor support for versioning large binary files. To understand why, you first need to know a little bit about how Git stores your data under the hood. Git stores your repository history as a directed acyclic graph, or DAG. Basically, this is a collection of objects that contain references to other objects within your repo. Branches and tags refer to a commit object. Commits refer to their parent commits, and also a tree object that represents a snapshot of your repository at the time the commit was created. This tree refers to blobs that contain the contents of the files in your repo, and nested trees that represent subdirectories in your repository. Git creates a new tree object every time you create a commit, and new blobs and trees for every file that's modified in your repository. Git is very good at reusing blobs for files that don't change between commits, but you still end up with one blob for every version of every file in your repository. This is why large binary files can start causing you problems, particularly if they're modified regularly. Let's look at a trivial case where we have a repository containing one large binary file. Imagine that file is a high resolution photo of an elephant, weighing in at around 50 megabytes. This creates a 50 megabyte blob in our repository. If we change the hue of that photo to pink and then commit it, we're going to create a second 50 megabyte blob, doubling our repository size, and so on and so forth. Git does compress these blobs using Zlib, and even Delta encodes them for efficient storage. However, since many binary file formats are already compressed, this often doesn't have much of an effect on the overall size of your repository. And this is where Git's distributed nature starts to cause problems. To work with a Git repository, you typically copy a full clone of that repository from Bitbucket. This means that every developer, deployment script, or continuous integration job that needs to work with your code has to pull down every version of every file in your repository. Versioning large binary files means your Git repository grows quickly, slowing down fetches and pushes for everyone on the team. Git LFS is a Git extension that solves this problem of storing large binary files. There have been many other attempts to solve this in the past, but Git LFS is particularly effective because it works transparently with your existing workflow. You don't have to learn any additional commands. Git LFS works by replacing large files in your repository with lightweight pointers, which are only a few bytes each. The pointers contain a reference to your large files, which are stored alongside your repository, but outside the DAG. When you push, the large files are transferred to Bitbucket's embedded LFS store, and your DAG is transferred to your Bitbucket repository as normal. This means your repository size only grows by a few bytes when you change a large file. When you pull, the DAG is retrieved from Bitbucket as usual. When the commit is checked out into your work tree, any pointer files are automatically replaced with the relevant files they reference from the Bitbucket LFS store. This means you only download the versions of those files that you want to work with, not every single interstitial version. As a developer, you never see these pointer files on disk, as Git LFS transparently swaps them out when you stage your changes. They're also swapped out automatically when you check out a previously existing commit. This means you can add, check out, pull, and push as normal without learning any new commands.